UC San Diego, Division of Trauma, Surgical Critical Care and Burns, Surgical Procedures Video Library. Chest Tube Insertion. The following video demonstrates an invasive surgical procedure which may result in harm to patients or healthcare providers and should only be performed by a medical professional. This video is not intended to be a substitute for clinical training. The University of California San Diego does not assume any responsibility or liability for any injury or damage to any person or property arising from the use of this video. By the end of the video, the participant should be able to number one, describe the indications and contraindications for inserting a chest tube. Number two, understand the complications associated with chest tube insertion. Number three, describe post-insertion care. Indications. Drainage of intrathoracic air or fluid collections. These may include, but are not limited, to pneumothorax, hemothorax, post-operative from a thoracic operation, and less commonly, chylothorax or empyema. To the left of the screen is an AP chest radiograph demonstrating a large right hemothorax. On the right side of the screen is a right-sided pneumothorax. Equipment. Local anesthetic with either 1 or 2 percent with or without epinephrine should be administered to the patient provided that time allows. To this end, a syringe with a 22 gauge needle are required. A number 10 or 15 blade, a basic procedure tray, a chest tube varying between 28 to 40 French as well as an O-silk suture to secure the chest tube to the patient, and a drainage collection system. These may include an atrium, a pleurivac, or Sahara. Preparation. The patient should be placed in the supine position with the arm abducted to greater than or equal to a 90 degree angle. The patient should receive a wide prep and drape, and if time permits, infiltration of at minimum 10 to 20 cc's of local anesthetic. Approach and exposure. Local anesthesia should be placed. The ideal location for the insertion of a chest tube is the mid to anterior axillary line at the fourth or fifth intercostal space. A transverse incision should be created through the skin and subcutaneous tissues, ensuring that the incision is placed over the superior aspect of the rib in order to avoid injury to the intercostal neurovascular bundle. It is in this location that dissection using blunt entry with a Kelly or peon should take place. Upon entry into the pleural cavity, digital exploration of the wound and pleural space should be undertaken. This will allow for the evaluation of adhesions between the lung and the chest wall and may also help to avoid insertion of the tube into the lung parenchyma or abdomen. The chest tube is grasped distally with a clamp and the proximal end is either clamped or folded upon into the operating surgeon's hand. The chest tube should be guided into the pleural cavity aiming posteriorly and cephalad as the clamp is released and withdrawn. The tube is advanced in a twisting fashion toward the apex of the lung. The tube should be inserted to a distance of approximately 8 to 16 centimeters depending on patient size and body habitus. Following insertion of the chest tube, it should be connected to the appropriate collection system and secured. Long incisions should be closed with sutures and the tube should be anchored to the patient with a drained stitch, ideally using an O-silk suture. The tube should be further secured with adhesive tape. Complications. A variety of complications may be associated with the chest tube insertion. These include, but are not limited, to puncture and or laceration of intrathoracic 
or intra-abdominal organs, incorrect tube position, intrathoracic infection, injury to the neurovascular bundle. There is some evidence suggesting that the administration of prophylactic antibiotics may decrease the incidence of intrathoracic infection. Post-procedure management. Immediately following chest tube insertion, a confirmatory chest x-ray should be undertaken. This chest x-ray may demonstrate the position of the tubing, the presence of a residual hemothorax, as well as a persistent pneumothorax. Ideally, all holes or fenestrations in the chest tube should be within the pleural cavity. The chest tube, together with its drainage collection system, should be appropriately secured, and unless otherwise contraindicated, the application of negative pressure usually at a setting of minus 20 centimeters of water, should be applied. In patients with a massive air leak, the decision may be made to place the chest tube to straight drainage only. Summary. Chest tube thoracostomy is a therapeutic and potentially diagnostic procedure, particularly in patients presenting with undifferentiated shock in which there is an unknown source for the shock. Appropriate technique and immediate post-insertion radiography are mandatory for the successful placement of a chest tube. Anticipation and prevention of complications are critical to success. Once again, thank you for joining us. My name is Dr. Dennis Kim with the UC San Diego Division of Trauma, Surgical Critical Care, and Burns.